Is the new Mac Studio worth it for photographers? So look what just came today. The new Mac Studio. As photographers, we need a lot of horsepower under the hood for our computers to run these bloated Adobe apps. I did not buy the Ultra, I went with the Max. Unbox, baby. Apple is notorious for their lovely boxing and packaging. Look at this. All right, wow. Let's get up the leather, man. Actually, there we go. Oh, look at that. Look, today, I actually had my wife helping me out. This is a bonus. <laughs> she wasn't expecting this. <laughs> and just pull out a box. Nylon braided AC cord. I don't know if, did I mention there's no mouse or keyboard with this? And there's no nothing else. But you do get the lovely sticker. So, yeah, just saying. So much for the carbon footprint. Let's move on to the studio itself. So that up there we go look at that and there we go there is our box that's pretty solid so got some got some girth to it and um that's it i mean uh, we've unboxed it i'm gonna plug it in port it up all right that wraps it up that's the unboxing we'll get into more details down in the studio when i get this thing ported up and all that good stuff let's see how this thing performs running some of these adobe um applications for photography. I'm not doing any benchmarks, anything like that. From a photographer point of view, I'm definitely going to give you my, well, just my personal feel of what I think about this box, as opposed to using a 2017 MacBook Pro with an Intel chip. So I'm pretty jazzed up that this is gonna fix some of my problems making videos, as well as um, some of my pet peeves with Adobe Lightroom. So, all right, that's it. Thank you. So, I assume Apple thought everyone would just buy their new keyboard and magic mouse with their already overpriced purchase. Hey, what's an extra $300 for something that should have been included? I mean, after all, it is a desktop computer. Heck, why not also throw in their new $1,600 monitor? No thanks, Apple. I can buy two really nice 32-inch monitors and use the remaining balance for a new lens. It's things like this that I've never liked about Apple. It's their rapacious desire to take as much of your money as possible. I mean, don't get me wrong, they make a damn good product and I appreciate the quality metals and materials, but come on, Apple, really? You couldn't include a keyboard and mouse for the cost of this machine? <laughs> well, I couldn't get by step one, which was to choose my country, and that's because I couldn't connect my current Apple keyboard and mouse. So, I grabbed the Windows keyboard, and that was that. Anyway, this is the most expensive computer I've ever bought, and I had to justify the cost by the performance of these revolutionary Apple silicon chips. Whether you're in the market for a new Mac or not, I highly recommend you have some type of backup system for your files. While I manage my own backups via my Synology NAS, I also set up Apple's time machine with an old hard drive I had lying around. And it came in handy for transferring files from my MacBook Pro over to the Mac Studio. It actually let me use one of my MacBook Pro backups to transfer to the studio, and that was pretty awesome. Unfortunately, the hard drive for my time machine was only a 5400 RPM drive with really low performance, so it took a little time, but still, it was like jumping right into my MacBook without skipping a beat. Apps, settings, files, customizations, they were all there. So my requirements for justifying such a hefty purchase may be entirely different than your requirements. But these are my top three reasons why I decided to buy this box and take and take on the cost of this unit. Yeah, what is going on? Hey, number one, time. Time is important. My time's important, your time's important. And if I can better manage my time with the resources I need, then I can justify the cost. And let's face it, Time flies when you're having fun. Number two, performance. And future proof for at least the next seven plus years. There's nothing like having Formula One like horsepower under the hood. It's just so gratifying. 
Number three, and this is a quirky one, noise. I just got a thing about trying to be creative whilst spinning fans are screaming at you. And Apple put a lot of engineering into this box, which I can totally appreciate. Even my Mandalorian bobbing head is louder than the studio. Look at baby Grogu, he's so cute. In the two weeks that I've owned the Mac Studio, I have now produced two YouTube videos and post-processed a number of images in Lightroom and Photoshop. I can now add Final Cut plugins in real time instead of waiting towards the end of the project. And I have to say, I am impressed. It's like night and day compared to my MacBook Pro, which, mind you, isn't a bad machine to begin with. But now, I no longer create proxy video clips in Final Cut Pro, saving loads of time. I can finally have multiple windows open for multitasking, as you can see here, and the fans haven't ramped up once yet. That's pretty awesome. I've been monitoring performance and memory pressure daily, as macOS will use up RAM quickly if it's available. And it does this before using the swap feature. And going with 64 gigs of RAM has been peace of mind. As you can see here, I'm running Final Cut, Lightroom, Photoshop, multiple browsers, email, and more. That's all while editing this video that you're watching now. That just wasn't possible on my MacBook Pro. And I should mention, I was running an external GPU graphics card for the MacBook with a dedicated eight gigs of RAM for video. All right, let's quickly jump into Lightroom and let me just show you a quick example of some of the performance. Um, I think I have an idea here. I have an image <laughs> that we all will feel the pain. Um, the pain with, and it's this guy right here. So, um, <laughs> I think you can already see where I'm going with this. Look at all of these dust spots. In fact, if we hit Q to bring up our clone and heal tool, and then we hit A, look at this. <laughs> Everyone's worst nightmare. I and mean, we have stuff, uh, just dust all over the space, all over the place, and some stuff around the, around the moon as well from the light. This is just incredible, right? I mean, this is the type of this is the type of photograph where you get four, five, six dust spots in on your your clone or heel tool, <laughs> and your fan starts speeding up, and your machine just starts bogging down. It's amazing how quickly this happens. So I'm going to quickly go back to Q and A. And we're just going to do a quick job. I'll use the I use the heel for now, and we're just going to kind of quickly go through these and see if this machine begins to slow down as I go ahead and start popping these guys in. I mean, I, this usually starts going nuts on me when I start doing this. Um, by now, my MacBook Pro would have already been bogging down, you know. And I'm I'm hacking this. I I, <laughs> I normally don't work this way, but I'm just trying to show an example of the performance here. You, know, you can see I'm, I'm overlapping all these uh, all these spots here. And it's just uh, you know disregard all that. Just get the I'm just doing it for the uh, the intention of uh, of seeing how this machine works. You know uh, I do hope to get these going. Wow, this is incredible. Look at this. But again, jeez, they're just all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, I'm making a mess, but you, you get the point. I mean, these are, um, the machine is just not slowing down. And I, well, I do have my mic on, but um, yeah, you, you wouldn't be, I don't think you'd be able to hear the fans, even if they were to start kicking up, but I can reassure you, I haven't heard a difference at all in the, uh, in the Mac Studio, in the fans here. So, uh, Pretty impressive. Look at this. It still has not slowed down. In fact, let's pull up our uh, system monitor here and let's see what's going on. Um, so we can see we're, we're still using we're using about just about 50 megs of RAM. Memory pressure still low. I mean, by now my MacBook would have been screaming, fan screaming, bogging down, really trying to catch up with the computing power, and this thing is just still whizzing away, whizzing away. Just really incredible. I'm making a mess here. <laughs> Let's see what this thing looks like. It doesn't look too bad though, even though I, I did a really messy job. But anyway, you get the impression, you get the idea. Pretty, pretty impressive. So, while I'm not happy with the cost of the Mac Studio, I am certainly thrilled each and every time I use it. 
It's a huge time saver for me and hasn't slowed down at all. The performance has been fantastic. So if you're thinking about buying one of these and you're doing anything remotely close to what I'm doing, I highly recommend staying away from the Ultra, buy the Max, and save yourself a ton of money and you will not be disappointed with the performance. And that's a wrap for this week, folks. I do hope you enjoyed this. I hope it um, can help you if you're in the market for one of these. I certainly had a lot of fun making this video. Um, got a little goofy. You got a chance to see uh, another side of me that maybe you haven't seen before, if you follow me weekly. Um, but in any case, have yourself an awesome week. Get out there, shoot, be kind to one another, and uh, yeah, enjoy life.